quickly, uh, just two things I wanted to cover finally. Um, I uh, quoted in my book a, a testimony by a Republican, I think a Republican appointed FBI director who just told a story about him walking down a street with a group of black boys, young men hanging out on one side and a group of white boys on the other side. This guy's not a racist, but he admitted about the, the challenges we all have about implicit racial bias that, that you might be suspicious of just because of the ingrained messages of a lifetime of the African-American boys on, on, and see them as more of a threat. Um, that's not him being a racist, right? That's what we mean by implicit racial bias. That's right. And what's interesting is in the data, and there's so many studies on this ad nauseum, where they control for other elements, they find that black officers actually have implicit racial bias against, uh, against African-Americans as well, tending to have absorbed so much of the sort of the, the messaging of the culture often and create that suspicion. Is that correct? Yes. And, and so this is, this is, and I don't think I hear disagreement on both sides of the aisle when we discuss this. I just think there are terms. We're not saying the same thing. You don't believe that, this, that, that, that the, our society uh, individuals are racist in our society, but you do believe when it comes to the law, we have a problem in a nation where there's no difference between blacks and whites of any economic gap in using marijuana. But African-Americans, because of the implicit biases within the justice system, will get arrested at four times the rate. Is that correct? That's right. And, and so that is something that from, and I know this from my mother working for IBM, that corporations even know, and they do things like you have mentioned before, trying to just have training where people are more aware of what these biases may be. They may they be gender biases, race biases, religious biases, or what have you. And that's a productive pursuit, correct? Yeah, in fact, I think that implicit bias training is uh, something increasingly judges are engaging in, uh, federal prosecutors, uh, uh, and not just, honestly, Senator, in the justice system, but obviously the consequences of implicit bias, if unchecked in the justice system, can truly mean loss of life and liberty. But frankly, because it's a common human condition that you and I and everyone else share, um, the ability to manage these implicit biases and recognize them consciously is really key to being able to have productive and healthy interactions with, with in a diverse society. Right. And, and we, we, it, it's, it's frustrating to me because it results often in, as we see, again, studies done that have controlled for uh, income and a lot of other things that blacks for the same crime will often get about 20% longer sentences, not because judges are racist, but because of that problem of bias. Yeah, implicit bias has shown to have, um, to kind of exacerbate racial disparities the deeper into the criminal justice system you go. Arrests, pretrial detention decisions, sentencing decisions, and the like, that there's a lot of data on that. And one of my, I've learned so much from my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, one of my favorite moments as a senator was going in to study the Bible in one of my colleagues' offices, and I saw a picture of a black girl on his uh, shelf, and I remember sort of being surprised at that, and then I examined, why am I surprised? Oh, because I have probably implicit biases about a, a conservative person, and that. That doesn't make me a, a somehow racially biased against my colleagues, does it? No. no but it's an, an It makes you a human being. A human being who has biases that sometimes are not constructive. And my biases of, because I went on to working on issues with this person, sometimes those biases undermine our ability to work together constructively to deal with uh, uh, the, the core values we all share. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay, real quick. The last thing I want to talk about is my mom has a saying. She says, behind every successful child is an astonished parent. And uh, uh, I know you as a friend, but recently I got to know your dad. I, I actually have his book. And I found his life truly stunning and, and, a, and a great Horatio Alger story of someone who is just speaks, screams to the American dream. He's very successful in the private sector. But he's not astonished with his daughters, uh, his, his kids. He's not astonished with you, that you have spent your entire life not in the most lucrative careers. You spent your entire life in public service. And, I, and I'm just wondering, what is it from your family that has made you dedicate yourself to the cause of this country and making it better. What, what did your parents teach you or you learn from those experiences that makes you want to do what you're doing? Uh, <clears throat> I am, oh, you make every witness cry apparently. Um, <laughs> I, I am deeply 
grateful and proud of <clears throat> uh, my father and my mother. Um, my father is the most humble person I know in the world, <clears throat> and their ethical character of my parents, um, uh, and their love of this country, because it showed them enormous opportunities that, um, uh, that they sought but didn't never expected uh, to have. And they raised two daughters who made choices to go into public service. My sister is a HIV, AIDS, infectious disease uh, physician in Baltimore, um, and me. And I don't think they would have imagined that either of us would have chosen these paths when they first immigrated into this country. But um, they have been enormously supportive of the choices that we have made. And um, I believe that it is quite astonishing that I would be sitting here before all of you in the US Senate um, seeking confirmation to be associate attorney general given that they came literally, as my father's book is called, with $8 in, in his pocket uh, and a scholarship to Cornell. And um, I hope every day that I can uh, live a life uh, to give them honor. I realize some of my tweets don't necessarily do that. Uh, I will uh, seek to, 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 to um, uh, do that moving forward, but I have been blessed to have the kind of parental embrace, the sacrifices that they have made, the successes that they have had, and if I can in any way pay it forward to the most vulnerable people in this country uh, and to live up to the ideals of our Constitution, uh, I am honored and will be continue to be honored to do so every day. Well, I will be very honored to, to vote for your confirmation. And I just want to say for the record, I apologize to Ms. Monaco for completely ignoring you during my <laughs> questioning, uh, but I'm grateful for you and I look forward to supporting your nomination as well. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Booker. And Ms. Gupta, you've given me an idea that we need to give all witnesses fair warning of <laughs> Senator Booker's last question. Yes. Be prepared. That, that would be fair. I, I'd appreciate that. Senator Cruz. <clears throat>